These are the moments we travel for, for the memories that will last a lifetime. Thank you, China, for being part of my story. Hi, I'm Nico and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to delve into the making of my Thank You China video. Now if you haven't seen this video then I've left the link below but I'm going to go through it step by step so you can just watch this video if not. I had lots of questions and comments about the different places that we've traveled to since we've been living in China so I thought the best thing to do was make this video and answer them all in one go. So let's start. Now the first 30 seconds of this video isn't actually in China at all. Now the reason for this is because it's a building up of the story. The first scenes that you'll see are actually from my home in Northumberland in the UK. Now I've actually made a longer film, a cinematic version of this, which I'll link up in the corner and also below on my channel so you can check that out if you want to see the whole story of it. I live really close to the beach back in the UK, so it's such a beautiful area and I love going back to visit. Let's have a look. As I stood in my little place on earth, the place that I call home, I knew that something was missing. So after the Northumberland bit, which is my home, you'll see a montage of different places in Asia that aren't China. Now, the story says I wanted to see the world, which is true. Before we moved to China, we were also traveling around South America and moving to China has given us the opportunity to travel to some amazing places in Asia. This part has Kuala Lumpur, Seoul, some islands in Cambodia and Japan. Now, the reason I've put these in is these are also part of my China story as we visited them since moving here. Now you might have seen these clips in different videos and that's because they are. Everything in this video was intentionally shot for a different video. The next part is when we get into China. So let's have a look. The places that you can't believe are real. I wanted a place where I could immerse myself in a culture, live like a local and discover hidden treasures. Surely a place like this doesn't really exist or does it so like i said after this bit from 32 seconds we are now in china all of the next clips are all in china if you're from china then you'll probably recognize a few and if you're not then hopefully i can tell you some stories and it'll make you want to visit now the first couple of shots are in the stone forest which is near kunming now there are actually more than one stone forest that you can go and visit we were going to go to the main one, which I'd heard really great things about, but also that it was quite touristy. So I got told by a local to go try a different one, which was a bit smaller and a bit less touristy. It was a little bit harder to get to and from. Luckily, the girls at the reception were really kind and helped us book a taxi to get us back to the train station. But if you're up for an adventure, then I would definitely recommend going to this than the more touristy one. Okay, let's have a look at the next bit. I wanted a place where I could immerse myself in a culture. We then have some shots from Inner Mongolia. Now, we traveled to Inner Mongolia last year for Golden Week and it was absolutely amazing. We stayed with a local family in their yurts and the landscape around this area was incredible. There was desert and grasslands, there was loads of animals and wildlife and it was just such a relaxing place to be. However, the journey there wasn't so relaxing for us. We decided to take the public bus to get there. It was a really hot day and lots of winding roads when you come out of Beijing. And because of this, someone actually threw up on my boyfriend. So that was nice. <laughs> and I wish that this was the first time that this had happened to us on our travels, but actually, no, it isn't. This would be the third time that someone's thrown up on us on a public bus. I think maybe we'll have to stop taking public buses. <laughs> After this part, there's a few quick snappy shots Live from like Xi'an, Beijing, treasures. and then a slow-mo from Lijiang just before really it kicks in. Or does it? Let's watch the next bit and then I'll talk about that.
after this we have a drill montage now obviously there's lots of different shots here um, first we've got the Longji rice terraces which is in the province of Guangxi these make a few appearances in this video because it was so beautiful unfortunately when we were there it rained the entire time but it didn't make it any less stunning We've got some shots from Nanjing because we used to live in this city so we spent over a year living in Nanjing so we've got some good drone shots from there. We've got some shots from Yunnan, uh, Baisha village and also on the Tiger Leaping Gorge trek that we did uh, earlier in this summer. We'll have some videos coming out from there soon hopefully. Um, and then it goes back up into the sky and the sky shots are a lot of them are actually from the city of Tianjin. Now, Tianjin is a really interesting city because it's got a really heavy European influence. So a lot of these shots you think, well, that's not China. It looks like Europe. And yeah, it is. It's China. It's Tianjin. So it makes it really interesting. Then I'm about to start talking and we're going to kick into some time lapses of probably the most iconic skyline in China. You guessed it. It's the Bund in Shanghai. China is the missing piece of the puzzle. So then I start to talk again and I say China is a change, a challenge, an adventure. Now when it says change, it's Xi'an at night time. It's the drum or bell tower. I'm not entirely sure which one. They were both really beautiful. Xi'an at night was just amazing. I really loved how lit up it was and it just was such a beautiful city. A challenge. I'm actually walking on the roof of the Bird's Nest Stadium. I didn't even realize that you could do this, <laughs> but if you come to Beijing, you can obviously go inside this, the National Stadium, which is nicknamed the Bird's Nest, which is great. It's a really cool thing to do, but you can also walk on the roof, which was amazing. Uh, you got to see some really great views. It was a little bit scary, but I would definitely recommend doing it. And adventure was Tiger Leaping Gorge. Now this trek was one of the most beautiful treks that I've ever been on, not just in China, ever. And it was just like a proper trek here in China and it was just such a great thing to do. If you like hiking, then you have to do the Tiger Leaping Gorge trek, trek in China. I've experienced things that I didn't know were possible and I've got to see some of the most beautiful places along the way. A lot of the next bits were um, shots from Inner Mongolia. Like I said before, it's such a varied landscape that loads of times you'll see Inner Mongolia popping up and you won't even realise because it looks just so different in every shot. There's a little shot from the top of Sun Yat-sen mausoleum in Nanjing, which was my favorite place to go in the city. It looks absolutely incredible in autumn when the leaves are changing and you can just see these beautiful leaves for miles. And also we've got some shots when I'm on a scooter, which is in Yangshuo. Now Yangshuo was such a beautiful area. Now, if you're coming to China, I definitely recommend going to Guangxi province and exploring the karst mountains that surround this area. They're unlike anything I've ever seen. It's so incredibly green as well, which doesn't surprise me because it rained the entire time that we were there. Let's have a look at the next bit. But travel isn't only about beautiful destinations. It's about the people you meet, the food you taste. Now the next section is about the people that you meet. Now, since living in China, I've met some amazing people and a lot of them are featured in our videos. This beautiful woman was part of the Yao ethnic group that lived in the Longji rice terraces. They had this incredibly long, thick black hair that they wrapped up on their head. They made some of the most beautiful and amazing textiles that I've ever seen. The next woman was in Xi'an when we visited the Terracotta Warriors. I got asked quite a lot of times for my photo to be taken. I don't actually mind this, but I know that some people kind of can get a little bit offended, but I think it's really quite cute that people want to take a photo. And that happened again on the bridge outside the Pearl Market when we were making our markets video in Beijing. These two little girls came up and the entire family were surrounding us taking pictures, but they were so cute that I really don't mind. 
The next part is about the food that you eat. Now this food montage is all from Xi'an. Xi'an had some of the best food that I've tasted in China. It was absolutely amazing. I've had a lot of comments about what's that smoke coming out of your nose? And that's called dragon's breath. Now it's one of the things that we tried in Xi'an. I actually thought it was some like colorful little sweets. I was like, mm, they look tasty. I had no idea that all this smoke was gonna come out of my mouth when I ate the sweets. They were a little bit weird. They tasted a bit like an ice cream cone with smoke. They didn't really taste of anything. I think it's more for the funny effect and it worked because lots of people were asking what they were. It's about enlightening the senses. Travel is education. The next part is about enlightening the senses. Now, a few of these clips are from the old town of Lijiang, which is in Yunnan. When we visited this province, it was the, just that. It was such a colorful area and it really just opened my eyes to how diverse China actually is. The next few clips were from the Confucius Temple in Nanjing. As I mentioned before, we used to live there, so we've got lots of shots from Nanjing. The next bit is about education. Obviously, it's one of the most famous sites in China. It's the Terracotta Warriors in Xi'an. Now, I learned a lot being there, but also I've learned a lot on this entire journey in China. Everywhere that you travel is an education and it opens up your eyes to learning lots of new things, which is why I love traveling so much. Escape. So I say escape. Now, the shots here, there's one where I'm sand sledging, which I've not done before. Um, and that was in Inner Mongolia. As I said, it's got desert and grasslands. So that was a really cool experience. And then I'm skiing. And yes, I'm skiing in China because you can ski in China. And this was at the resort town of Chongli, which is where they're going to hold the Winter Games in 2022. Or have been actually twice to ski in China to do different places and we made a video about it so you can check that out. Travel is about a change. Now the change bit <laughs> is actually from my western food video. Um, at this particular moment I'm trying some bread and unfortunately it's sweet. Now what I found here in China <laughs> is that in a lot of western style bakeries uh, you think it's going to be one thing and actually it's another so a lot of time i'm like mmm cheese bread that's going to be savory but it turns out that it's sweet and it can be a little bit disappointing now i'm from the uk so i like my bread to be <laughs> savory and my cheese to be savory but you know that's what travel is. It's about changing. It's about experiencing new things that you wouldn't back in your own country. And I guess that's the point of this part. It's about a journey. Travel is life. These are the moments we travel. So as the speaking bits the are drawing to a close, a it's starting to time. ramp up a little bit. Now these shots are some from Guangxi area, like I said before, we've got kind of Longji rice terraces, we've got some from Yangshuo, all these very, very green shots, they're all that all Guangxi province. We've got some shots from Xinping, which is so beautiful that China have imprinted it on the back of the 20 yuan note, which is what you'll see, and these beautiful cast mountains. And we've got some shots again of the adventure that we went on from Tiger Leap and Gorge. And then this whole section ends with like a slow motion shot of me walking up the steps to the Temple of Heaven, which is one of the most iconic sites in Beijing. And if you come to Beijing, then you should definitely visit it. Let's have a look at the next bit. Then it goes into a really fast effect which is actually not video. These are all different photographs of different places that we've been. It's just really snappy, like tick, 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 tick. And these photographs you'll all find on my Instagram account, which is at weonico. So if you want to see more good photography, then check out my Instagram account.
So as the music drops and the beat kicks in, we ramp it up a little bit. So we've got some hyperlapses outside the Forbidden City and of the Wild Goose Pagoda in Xi'an. So it goes Forbidden City, Wild Goose Pagoda, Forbidden City, Wild Goose Pagoda, all moving forward. Then as you get to the point, the gong hits and we start to move backwards. Now we're not actually moving backwards. What we've done is we've done the hyperlapse, but we've reversed the clip. So that's why it looks like we're moving backwards out of the shot. Then we've got some different areas. So we've got the 798 area in Beijing, which is this really industrial area. And this district's awesome. It's an art district and it's one of the best places to take photographs in Beijing. We've got some drone shots of Shenzhen and then the desert shot of Inner Mongolia again. After this really cool fast fast paced bit, we slow it down a little bit again by putting some more shots in of um, maybe with some of the people. We've got a shot of me in the flower field in Tianjin and we've got some of me uh, feeding a cow, which was in Inner Mongolia. This absolutely cute little dog that we found in Longji rice terraces and then also some more of like people that we've meet that we've met so there's a guy that I'm dancing with in Nanjing there's some cute little kids in Shenzhen and the cutest little girl again in Nanjing in the push chair which is nearly the end of the film right at the end of the film we cut into some shots of me walking. Now, a lot of people asked, oh, was this in Chongqing? Because um, it looks really spicy, I guess. But actually, these shots at the very end were in Shenzhen. The lighting in Shenzhen was really nice around the food markets, and that's where the video comes to a close. So as you can see, it's quite a fast paced video. Now there's a few reasons that we did this. One is because we made it for a video competition and the video competition states that you have to have it under three minutes. So we wanted to cram as much into those three minutes as was possible. But also we wanted to make it quite fast paced to keep the viewer entertained. And as we said before, we didn't make this film specifically for this. It's a montage of different videos that we made so we needed to make the editing very clever so you didn't notice that it wasn't made for this film. Now a lot of you have asked about the music that I used so I've dropped the name of that below and also we get our music from Epidemic Sound. We have a subscription there so it means that we can use as many different music as much music as we want because we pay for this subscription. Also, if you're interested in seeing what gear that I use then I've left my kit below as well so you can take a look at that. This is the first time that I've done this sort of um, video, this breakdown video. Let me know what you think about it. If you like it, then maybe we'll consider doing some for other videos as well. If you don't, that's fine. I just thought I'd give it a go. If this is the first time that you're watching some of my videos, then make sure that you subscribe and have a watch of some of the other ones. I hope you like this video and let's finish it off by watching the whole Thank You China all the way through. I'll see you next time. As I stood in my little place on earth, the place that I call home, I knew that something was missing. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to see the places that I had only ever dreamed of, that I had seen in paintings and read about in stories. The places that you can't believe are real. I wanted a place where I could immerse myself in a culture, live like a local, and discover hidden treasures. Surely a place like this doesn't really exist. Or does it? piece of the puzzle. China is a change, a challenge, an adventure. 
I have experienced things that I didn't know were possible and I've got to see some of the most beautiful places along the way. But travel isn't only about beautiful destinations. It's about the people you meet, the food you taste. It's about enlightening the senses. Travel is education, escape. Travel is about a change. It's about a journey. Travel is life. These are the moments we travel for, for the memories that will last a lifetime. Thank you, China, for being part of my story. Let's go.